Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warns of Iran's ongoing attempts to conquer the Middle East while re-emphasizing Israel's resolve to thwart Tehran's destabilizing aspirations. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei calls Israel a malignant cancerous tumor in the West Asia region that has to be removed and eradicated. Israel is reportedly examining ways to prevent a humanitarian collapse in the Gaza Strip while taking measures to avert an additional escalation in violence to avoid a military conflagration with the Palestinian enclave. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met this evening with French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris, during which the Israeli leader reiterated Israel's resolve in thwarting Iran's pursuit of nuclear weapons, as well as Tehran's ongoing attempts to destabilize the Middle East. Netanyahu's meeting with the French president came one day after the Israeli leader concluded the first part of his Europe trip in Berlin, where he held in-depth talks with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. During a joint press conference, Netanyahu pointed to Iran's blatant calls for Israel's annihilation, while evidently seeking the means to realize its evil aspiration. Uh, Iran's calls for our destruction, uh, but it's also seeking nuclear weapons to carry out its genocidal designs. We know that for a fact. We have shared, as uh, Chancellor Merkel has said, uh, we have shared with the uh, the German government, German specialists, the information that we uh, uh, retrieved from a secret atomic archive that uh, Iran has. We think that it's important, as uh, Chancellor Merkel has said, that the IAEA investigate Iran based on this new information, a lot of new information that Israel has now provided the IAEA as well. Uh, and it's important to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. We commit, and I commit again, that we will not let that happen. Prime Minister Netanyahu also took the opportunity to reiterate Jerusalem's position, in which it will not allow Iran to entrench itself militarily in its backyard Syria, urging Europe's powers to take note of the apparent aspiration of the Islamic Republic, which according to the Israeli leader, is trying to conquer the Middle East. Chancellor Angela Merkel stressed, on her part, Germany's ongoing efforts together with its European counterparts France and Britain to preserve the nuclear agreement, which Berlin believes remains the best method to assure Iran does not accomplish its aspiration of acquiring nuclear weapons. That said, the German leader emphasized that she was aware of Iran's destabilizing activities across the Middle East, dubbing Tehran's activities as worrying, especially when it comes to Israel's security. Deutschland hat ja die, dieses Abkommen nicht gekündigt, zusammen mit anderen europäischen Partnern. So wann sind wir uns doch einig, dass die Frage des regionalen Einflusses des Irans besorgniserregend ist, insbesondere auch für die Sicherheit Israels. Und deshalb wir aus unserer Sicht auch alle diplomatischen Bemühungen unternehmen werden, um sowohl beim ballistischen Programm des Iran, aber auch bei der Frage der Aktivitäten in Jemen und bei der Präsenz der iranischen Armee in Syrien. Chancellor Merkel also took the opportunity to condemn a statement by Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who stated the position of the Islamic Republic on his Twitter account, in which it views Israel as a malignant cancerous tumor in the West Asia region that has to be removed and eradicated. Merkel emphasized that while Germany is aligned with Israel on the need to thwart Iran's aspiration to acquire nuclear weapons, the division between Berlin and Jerusalem remains in the method to assure the Islamic Republic does not achieve its goals. Bezüglich meiner Frage möchte ich Folgendes sagen. Wir lehnen das, was die iranische Führung dort gesagt hat, aufs Schärfste ab. Wir stehen für das Recht auf Sicherheit für Israel selbstverständlich und haben dies auch in aller Klarheit und Härte zu jedem Zeitpunkt dem Iran gesagt. Nichtsdestotrotz glauben wir, dass uns das Ziel eint, dass Iran niemals eine nukleare Bewaffnung bekommen darf. Und die Frage, in der es Meinungsverschiedenheiten gibt, geht über die Frage, wie erreichen wir das am besten. 
Meanwhile, in Tehran, Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei revealed he had ordered preparations to increase Iran's uranium enrichment capacity if the nuclear deal with world powers would fall apart after the United States' withdrawal from the multinational agreement. The Iranian Supreme Leader further vowed never to accept European demands to limit Tehran's military activities, including its ballistic missile program that has the capacity of carrying nuclear warheads, terming Europe's demands a dream that will never become a reality. از برخی حرفهای بعضی از دولت‌های اروپایی اینجور برمیاد که اینها توقع دارند ملت ایران هم تحریم‌ها رو تحمل کنه با تحریم‌ها دست و پنجه نرم کنه و هم از فعالیت هسته‌ای خود که نیاز قطعی آینده کشور است دست بکشه و همین محدودیت‌هایی رو که بر اون تحمیل کرده اند این محدودیت‌ها رو ادامه بده من میگم من به این دولت‌ها میگم بدانند که این خواب آشفته تعبیر نخواهد شد Now to another matter Israel's defense minister Avigdor Lieberman voiced a warning to the Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip, saying, we will settle all the accounts with Hamas and the Islamic Jihad. Speaking at the meeting of his Israel Beitenu faction, Lieberman went on to say, it needs to be clear that we aren't prepared to accept a routine of kites, riots on the Gaza security fence and attempts to breach it and to cause damage to sovereign Israeli territory. That is why the top Israeli defense official asserted Israel is going to act in keeping with its interest at the time and timing that is convenient when the leadership in Jerusalem will decide. The defense minister further revealed that roughly 600 kites have been flown thus far out of the Gaza Strip, 400 of which were successfully intercepted by Israel's security forces by various technological means. That said, 200 kites managed to reach Israel and 9,000 dunams of crops and woods were burned. The comments by the Israeli defense minister came as the wave of fires caused by the incendiary kites in the Gaza periphery continues. A fire broke out once again in the Beiri forest, which had already been extensively damaged by previous fires, as well as the area of the Sterot train station, which forced the service on the Ashkelon and Tivot line to be suspended temporarily for several hours. Meanwhile, the IDF has continued to respond with restraint to the Kai terrorism and attempts by Palestinian Islamists to infiltrate Israeli territory. IDF troops reportedly killed a Palestinian Islamist who crossed a fence into Israeli territory with an axe. No injuries were reported along the Israeli troops, yet damage was caused to the Gaza-Israel security fence. Israeli security officials said following the incident that while Israel has taken measures to avert an additional escalation in violence and does not want a military conflagration in Gaza, it is not yet clear whether Hamas has gotten the message. Thank you for joining our 2000 daily news program. We encourage you to keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.